Fellow Griefers and Trolls. Eric the Plague Doctor, 981YT here, and Picos. Welcome back to more Elder Scrolls Online, my favorite multiplayer game of all time. So, in the last one, we, uh, we got, uh, Ember, uh, the new follower, and did this, uh, little mission over here at Steadfast Manor. So, yeah. But, uh, speaking of Ember, let's, uh, let's use her. Why not? Look out, everyone. Tamriel's best duo is back! I'm gonna beat the shit out of her. But, um... Yeah, so let's see where we're... Ah! Right over there. Very nice. I don't know. Uh, let's actually... Um, get the multi-rider mount out for her. You know how I get when it's too bumpy. Alright, yeah. That's gonna work just fine. Anyway. Let's head up over here. Oh, bother. Milady's gotten herself into terrible trouble. Again? Oh, what a fortuitous turn of fortune. Once again, you appear when Lady Laurent and I need you most. You see, I find myself in something of a pickle and could use a modicum of assistance. Tell me, friend, how good are you at breaking ancient curses? Ancient curses? I think you better explain. Yes, yes, of course. Milady always says I misplaced my head if it wasn't attached. Now, where was I? Oh, oh, yes, the curse. My mistress, Lady Laurent, was hired to help prepare this site for some important meeting or another. Then disaster struck. What sort of disaster? Well, usually I'm the one who stumbles into trouble, but this time Milady found the old chest. It was so unlike her to open it herself, and... That's when she activated the curse. I'd gladly give you my annual stipend if you help me save Lady Laurent. I'll help you save Lady Laurent. Oh, thank you. You've lifted a great weight I'd off like my shoulders. Uh, come along. Lady Laurent is along the southern coast. Do prepare yourself. The curse has made Milady a different person. Literally. She's been possessed by an ancient sea captain. No, is that really something we want to undo? Let's be real here. I hate, I hate Lady Laurent. But anyway, uh, tell me more about this curse, Stibbs. Well, I'm far from an expert in such matters, but it started as soon as Milady opened that old chest. Lady Laurent immediately changed and started acting like an ancient sea captain. She's certainly not her usual demanding self. That's good. I like that. Anyway, it's good to see you again, Stibbons. And you as well, my friend. I just wish that one of your visits didn't involve the imminent demise of either me or my honored employer. Lady Laurent will be happy to see you, especially if you manage to remove the captain's spirit from her body. What can you tell me about this, uh, sea captain? Not very much, I'm afraid. He's boisterous, confident, and rather bawdy, if I'm being honest. I detest him, and I can't abide such a depraved individual taking up residence in my mistress. It's unseemly. Come along, and you'll see for yourself. Yes! Are we going to race? You open my old hope chest? Oh, that's not good. Lady Clarice Laurent. I'm Lady... 
No, I am someone else. Captain? Is that you in there, my love? Oh, first a curse yes, and please. now a ghost. Oh, talk to Lady Laurent, please. I'm much too upset for rational discourse. My darling Jan, seeing you makes my loins stir and my... Ow! Uh, Lady Laurent, are you all oh, right? Get out of my head! Is that you? Is that... What a ridiculous question. Wait, I know you. Stibbins found you? Hmm. Finally did something right for a change. Good. You can Bitch. help me break the curse. I seem to have unleashed it when I opened this chest. Why were you talking so strainly? It's the sea, Captain. Stibbins and I were exploring when I spotted this hope chest partially buried in the sand. I usually let my manservant deal with such things, but for some reason, I felt compelled to open it. That's when... When... When what? I remember my ship, a proud vessel, and my valiant crew. There was a storm, I think, but I can't remember my name. Ooh, interesting. My body didn't have quite this many tempting curves the last time I checked. You. You. Just you. Why, I'm Captain... Captain... Kinnereth's arse sits right on the tip of my tongue. Well, never mind that. Come, Jan. We must hither to the big tree. I promised to meet you there, and now that I have a body, nothing can stop me. The big tree. Oh, dear! Follow Lady Laurent. She's in no condition to wander I'll around. I'll pray not me. I'm coming with you. Be gone, brother. I plan to dock with my lady love, and this boat has no need of a third oar. Brother? Third oar? Uh, Milady, you're confused. Ah, oh, there you are, my turtle dove. Come to me, my darling. I've missed you so. The ghost woman. She's inside you, friend. The captain thinks you're her. Talk to Milady and play along. See what you can learn. Ah, oh, fair Jan. How I've longed to hold <laughs> you close again. <laughs> You were never far from my thoughts, even while I sailed across the stormy seas. And here I am, just as I promised, back from the war for an intimate rendezvous under our favorite tree. You fought in a war? You tease me, my little vexen. You know I am a captain in the magnificent All Flags Navy. Perhaps the best in the entire fleet. Ah! but I do enjoy our little amusements. What game are we playing this time, pray tell? No game, I'm just trying to remember. You've been gone so long. Alas, that is the nature of war, my dearest. Those slowed are terrible creatures. But know this, oh. every time I set sail, I do it for you. I cannot abide another day with my love in dire peril from the threat of Thras's monsters. And what should I call you, my darling? Now I know you jest, my sweet. To my crew, I am Captain. But to you, I am... Ow! 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 Lady Laurent? Uh, get out! Oh, yes, it's me. At least for the moment. Take my useless manservant and go to the lighthouse. The plaques there tell the story of the All Flags Navy. Maybe they contain a clue as to how to break this damn curse. Off with you. Take Stibbins and investigate the lighthouse. I'll be along in a moment. I need to compose myself. It's clear that this randy sea captain has strong feelings for the ghost that's inside you. Maybe we can use that. Let me ponder. Why isn't Jane Janny's ghost trying to control me, the way the sea captain is trying to control you. No idea. But I could see her inside you while the captain was at the helm, as it were. She was giving me... him. The puppy dog eyes. Very disconcerting. Anyway, to the lighthouse. <laughs> it's clear this is somehow tied to the All Flags Navy. 
Oh, you do realize it's taking everything I have to keep that foul-mouthed, lascivious sea captain at bay? Go read the plaques and learn the history for yourself. Or maybe you can get that ghost inside you to help. I'll be along shortly. Oh, yes, the lighthouse. It, it's full of historical information. What a good idea, milady. Examine the historical plaques and see what you make of them. Ah, the old lighthouse. I remember it well. A terrible illness ravaged the continent of Tamriel starting in the year First Era 2200. This deadly sickness, which came to be known as the Thracian Plague, claimed more than half of the population before it ran its course. For a good portion of the early part of the century, the origin of the plague remained a mystery and the subject of much speculation. It first appeared along the western shores of the continent, spreading onward from Daggerfall, uh, Higath, uh, Anvil, and Falanesti. Not even the islands of the High Elves were saves, safe, blah, and the city of Korgrad on Somerset was devastated by the disease. The place took the plague took a terrible toll that was measured in more than just lives lost. The political ramifications of the disease changed the dir direction of Tamriel. Valenwood was weakened, the population of, Ili of Iliac Bay was drastically reduced, and the tribes of elsewhere decreased from 16 to a mere 2. When it became evident that the slowed were responsible for this unprovoked attack, steps were taken to deal with the threat once and for all. Ah oh, yes, the Thracian plague. Terrible disease, simply terrible. I was lucky. So many others. Bendu Olo, the Colovian king of Anvil, devised a bold plan for ending the threat, posed by the slowed of Thras once and for all. He proposed the creation of a vast fleet made up of ships from every nation. He further proposed that he would step away from his royal duties to personally assemble and command the fleet, which he planned to use to take the battle directly to the Slode. While the exact evidence that convinced Bendu Olo and other leaders that the Slode were responsible for the plague was never made public, it was clear by First Era 2 1230 or so that most of the continent believed in the Slode's guilt, and the disease had become known as the Thracian Plague. In 2241, the Alessian Emperor uh, finally agreed to fund the effort and command and commanded Bendu Olo to get started. Olu Olo began by awarding himself the rank of Baron Admiral, then went about gathering the captains who would help him refine his plans and strategies as well as the shipwrights needed to build the vast fleet he envisioned for the Enterprise. It wasn't long before an island in the Sistris Archipelago was selected as the staging ground for what Olo was now calling the, his All Flags Navy. In First Era 2243, Olo and his enemy, uh, sorry, his entourage, 
landed on the island of High Isle and began constructing the dry docks and infrastructure needed to build the fleet and launch it when the time was right. I remember the Baron Admiral quite fondly. Excellent leader. I would have followed him anywhere. I suppose I did. The work underway on High Isle was conducted with as much secrecy as possible. In no way did Baron Admiral Bendu Olo want to tip their hand to the slowed. The first vessel assigned to the fleet came from existing navies and established patrols around High Isle to safeguard the island. Initially, the Slowed ignored the activity around High Isle, but as the shipyards edged ever closer to completion, minor skirmishes began to spring up in the waters between Thras and Sistris. The Slowed never launched a mass massive initiative against the island, so it remains unclear as to whether they never recognized the threat or did not have the forces to strike at the island. The ship and docks were completed in First Era 2249. A large fleet of ships from every Tamrielic nation were already on hand to defend the island and there formed the basis of Olo's newly designed All Flags Navy. Just as they finished construction on the island, facilities and infrastructure, the workers immediately turned their attention to building warships, specifically to add to the fleet. The word went out far and wide, calling for volunteers to become sailors marines and captains to serve aboard the new vessels. Bendu Olo's dream of a powerful united fleet to reign justice on the Slode was coming to fruition. Ah, what a sight! When the first ships of the All Flags Navy sailed into the upgraded harbor, I was aboard one of those vessels, and it was here that I met my lady love. Between First Era two, uh, 2249 and First Era 2259, the shipyards worked night and day to return, to turn out the massive number of vessels needed to bolster the All Flags Navy. By First Era 2260, the Armada numbered some 130 ships of various sizes flying under the banners of the Argonians hey Bretons Colovians Imperials Red Guards and even uh, free booters and mercenaries these same nations also sent thousands of sailors Marines adventurers and support personnel in perhaps the greatest allied action in Tamrielic history. The fleet was ready, it was time to unleash Tamriel's instrument of vengeance on the slowed. Ugh, god, this is a lot of reading. With the powerful elf mage, uh, Serebane, at his side, Baron Admiral Bendu Olo issued the order and the Allied Armada sailed out of the High Isle port toward the Coral Kingdoms of Thras. From the Abyssian Sea and into the Sea of Pearls, the fleet sailed using. Oh, sorry. The fleet sailed using enchanted lodestones to navigate and keep the numerous ships in formation and on course. When they reached the Thracian archipelago, after sailing through a fierce storm, they found the islands surrounded by a dense fog. 
Vendu appeared on each ship as a magical projection and ordered the fleet to attack the largest tower and lay siege to its coral tower. Many ships were lost, but the slowed paid the price for unleashing their dastardly plague upon Tamriel. Baron Admiral Bendo, Benda Olo led the surviving ships of the fleet back to the High Isle in victory. So many lost. But even as my ship sank beneath the waves, I knew that victory was in our grasp. The Allflag's navy returned to High Isle and received a hero's welcome. But the joy of victory was tempted by remorse. Tampered by Tempered by remorse. Nearly half of the Armada's contingent was lost in the battle to weak to wreck. Uh, vengeance upon the slowed. All Sorry, after the all-out assault on Thras, Baron Admiral Bendu Olo and the leaders of the various groups who had come together to assemble the, the largest allied naval force in Tamriel history uh, to establish a monument to honor and remember those who had fought, fought and died to defeat the Thrasian threat. Under the supervision of Master Builder um, Tobin Moorcroft Monument Islet a very small island at the very center of High Isle was selected as the site of the monument construction began almost immediately on the key tributes honoring the All Flags Navy these included All Flags Castle Monument Lighthouse Memorial Garden and Monument Inn the monument complex was completed in First Era uh, 2271. Baron Admiral Olo, the leader of the Allied groups, and many of the surviving captains were on hand when the memorial was dedicated to the memory of the lost vessels and their crews as well as to the victory over the slow. Tobin Moorcroft? I know that name. My brother? Yes! Yes, the Master Builder was my brother! Tobin Moorcroft? Oh, this is all that wretched scoundrel's fault. I oh, read these plaques all the time. Oh, I never remember a word. Friend. Just that See history has forgotten my I love. And even you. I can only remember bits and pieces. Until today, I remember Tobin Moorcroft, and I spit on his memory. What do you remember about Tobin? I remember that he was a cad and a coward. A sorry excuse for a man. He was my beloved's brother, and the master builder of the All Flags Memorials. He carved the names into the garden plaque personally. But not my captains. Not my love. You remember your love now? I remember only glimpses, like a shadow moving across a wall. He was a sea captain, tall, strong, proud. He called me his little turtle dove, his safe port in a storm. Oh, I wish I could remember his name, or his touch, or his face. Was your love one of the captains that sailed with the All Flags Navy? The All Flags? Yes. Yes, I think that's right. That's what it says on these old plaques. Oh, I wish I could remember more. It's the curse, I fear. Gets into everything and muddies the water. Been that way ever since... Ever since... Damn it! Ever since Tobin Moorcroft? Tobin? Yes. I refused that snake's advances. I was grieving in shock and in pain. And he demanded I betray my love for another man. How could I? It was too soon. You must help. I think it started at the inn. End this curse so I can remember. The inn? The building at the center of the island? I suppose it wouldn't hurt to go look. Ah, 
I remember this place. Jan and I shared many pleasant encounters beneath this roof before I set sail with the fleet. Oh, no, sir. Absolutely not. <sighs> Lady Jan seems to think one of us is someone untoward. Talk to her, my friend. No, Tobin. You cannot offer me a drink. And I have absolutely no intention of dancing with you. I'm here with my captain, and I have no patience for the advances of his foolish younger brother. Away with you, foul sir. Jan is mine, little brother. Go play with your hammer and chisels. My sweet deserves a night to remember before I set sail from Port Sargo. A night to remember? But, 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 anyway, uh, but Port Sargo, that's the old dock on the eastern shore of this very islet. The ruins of Port Sargo. Somewhat disconcerting, as long deserted places tend to be. But there's a plaque. See what it says. The All Flags Navy started here as the first ships arrived to help protect the island. While the infrastructure was under construction, before the shipyards could turn out new vessels, the people of Tamriel sent their best ships to patrol the waters around High Isle. They were ships of the line from the established navies, merchant vessels, freebooters, and mercenaries, all ready to defend the effort and eventually take the war directly to the Slode. These were the initial 14 ships that arrived to form the basis of the All Flags Navy. Long may they be remembered. The relentless Kolovian Baron Admiral Bendu. Anvil Song, Kolovian Baron Captain Nolius Fulvu. Uh, Fal Falvius. I hate some of the names in this game. The Ruby Trident. Ooh, I like that. A uh, Colovian captain had ha had Rus Viria. The King's Jest. Breton captain Lazolda Devox. The pristine Halbred. Breton captain name scratched out. Own Seas Oath, Red Guard Captain Astara. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm, the pristine halberd. The captain's name has been scratched off the plaques on the pedestal and on the wall. Here to see me off, little brother? How touching. Baron Ad Baron Admiral. Admiral. After years of preparation, we're finally ready to show those slug bastards what for. My ship was one of the first to join the fleet, and today it's ready. Give the word and we'll set sail on the next wave. Remind me, Captain, which vessel is yours again? Why, just the finest warship ever to set sail from High Rock. Surely you remember the name of... of... um... Uh, by any chance, is your ship the pristine Halbera? Uh, yes, of course! The pristine Halberd! The pride of the Breton fleet! We've helped protect this rock during the long years of build-up. Now we're ready to be the instrument of vengeance, just as you planned. Ah, uh, yes, a fine ship. Um, and remind me, who is the captain of the pristine Halberd? The captain? Why, I am the captain! Yes, yes, but tell me your name, Captain. My name? Why, I'm... Uh, I'm... Renwick Moorcroft, Captain of the Pristine Halberd, and proud member of the All Flags Navy. So you're Captain Renwick Moorcroft. Uh, out! Uh, no, I'm Lady Laurent. He's Captain Renwick. But why haven't you broken this curse yet? 
I'm not sure how much longer I can fight off the captain. Talk to Stibbins and end this already! Captain Renwick Moorcroft, my beloved's true name. You must add my beloved's name to the main garden monument before we forget it again. That's not going to happen. Only the hammer and chisels of I, Tobin Moorcroft, can carve those tablets. I hid them where they will never be found. My big brother, so proud, so famous, but not anymore. I made sure he'll never be remembered. Stibbins, that's not you, is it? Stibbins? What a ridiculous name. I'm Tobin Moorcroft, master builder of the All Flags Navy Monuments. My work, unlike my brother's, will be remembered forever. So you built all of this? Everything on Monument Islet. Well, I had help. Apprentices, assistants, laborers. But the design and the fine detail work? That's all mine. Impressive, and you carved plaques with a hammer and chisel. The finest hammer and chisel in the world. I paid a small fortune for the enchantments, but you'll never discover where I hid... Out, you vile creature! Never fear, I'm myself again. And better yet, I know where this Tobin hid his tools. I saw it while he was inside my head. To the graveyard, my friend! And up we go! I saw in Tobin's mind. Dig there. No, not my tools. Dig somewhere else. Do you have the tools? Quickly, carve my beloved's name into the plaque at the Memorial Garden. Once his name is added to the Central Monument, we will never forget him again. A dedication ceremony? For me? How exciting! Captain Renwick Moorcroft of the Pristine Halberd. Place my beloved name where well it belongs. Well done, my turtle oh, dove. You do it, you friend. You saved my, my memory. Hands are shaking. I'm now so we can nervous. be together for all eternity. Did that really I happen? Did, have did I have the spirit of some ancient All Flags Navy captain residing inside my head? My memory is all a jumble. My big brother. Yes, but Stibbins and I ended the curse. How are you? How do you feel now? How do I feel? Like some virile man was stomping around inside my body with his oversized boots and manly urges. It was unsettling. And, if I'm being totally honest, somewhat arousing. <laughs> Never mind that. My manservant wants a word with you. But please hurry. I have a task for Stibbins that needs to be dealt with post-haste. Oh, thank you, my friend. I never would have been able to save Lady Laurent without your help. Do you think the curse is really... Oh, broken? yes. Of course, the effects may linger for a time, but the worst of it is over. And we righted a wrong of history. Captain Renwick Moorcroft's role in the All Flags Navy has been restored. Uh, but how is Lady Laurent? Is she all right? I think so. She said she had a task for you. It's something rather urgent. An urgent task? Oh, well, nothing ever changes. But I live to serve. Here, my annual stipend, just as I promised. Thanks again for saving Lady Laurent, ending the curse, and restoring a piece of the archipelago's history. Now I must see to me, lady. Stibbins? Come here, my manservant. All this foolishness about forgotten love has given me an itch. I am in need of a good scratch. Am I in trouble? Uh, Sorry, I just... Uh, well, if you insist. Okay, automatically equipped. That's good.
I'll figure out something to put her in, but let's see where we need to go next. Want to walk. <laughs> I didn't yeah. want to walk. actually has a torso. Traveler, I advise caution. A corruption has gripped Stone Lore Grove, turning the wildlife aggressive and spreading an impurity unlike anything our circle has ever seen. Nature itself has fallen out of balance. What sort of corruption are you talking that about? That is what I hope to determine. The Arch Druid sent me to investigate. But it was all I could do to avoid the once docile creatures of the grove. I found a few pockets of corruption that must be cleansed, but I need another druid to assist me. You need another druid to cleanse the corruption? Really, I just need another set of hands. Here, let me mark your map. I'll cast the cleansing spell, then you burn out the impurity. That will temporarily restore the balance while we search for the source. The circle will compensate you, of course. Let's find a few concentrated areas of corruption. My spells will cleanse the impurities, then you burn them. Hopefully we can determine the source of the corruption before this malady spreads to the rest of the island. Just keep your guard up. A stone... Is Stone Lore Grove really that dangerous? It wasn't always. It used to be one of the safest locations on the island. In fact, my ancestors deemed the grove sacred when they first arrived. Now the corrupted wildlife attacks for no reason, and some of my fellow druids have been afflicted. Cleansing fire after I cast my spell. First the plants, then the animals, and now even some druids have been afflicted. Corruption spreads quickly. 
burn the corpse while I cast a cleansing spell. We are the spirit of the grove. We are the evergrowth. And we... This druid seeks to help. While another has unbalanced the true way. Aid us, mortal. Before the nature that sustains this grove collapses. How... Pardon that display. I've never been forcibly taken over by a spirit of nature before. I wasn't sure if the corruption was connected to the Evergrowth, but now we know. And we know a druid is somehow involved. That... troubles me. What's the Evergrowth? As I understand it, this grove was deemed sacred by the early druids, but it was also out of balance. They shaped Ifra's laws into a spirit and gave that spirit dominion over the grove. It recognized that I was trying to help it and reached out. It also said another druid had unbalanced the true yes. way. But is that druid acting out of malice or ignorance? Either way, if the Evergrowth succumbs, then the corruption will increase and spread out of control. We must take this news to the Circle Elders. Meet me in our village. I'll meet you in the Stone Lore Grove village. Our village lies at the center of the Grove. Once we get there, I will tell the Archdruid and the other Elders what we learned. Druid, Elders, this outsider helped me. And the Evergrowth, it spoke through me. The spirit of the Grove? It hasn't manifested like that in many generations. Are you sure? Druid Audrine has never given us reason to doubt her observations. Tell us, child, what did the spirit say? It warned us that nature was out of balance. That a druid was responsible for this trouble. Out of balance. That explains the corruption. But to blame a druid, I cannot accept that without proof. Then we will find that proof. Friend, meet me at the Circle's ritual site. Over here, my friend. The Circle Elders cannot accept that one of our own may be responsible for this disaster. And I could hear the doubt in their voices concerning the Evergrowth. We need to prove that one of our Circle has caused this unbalance. How do you want to proceed? Help me investigate. Search the village for any signs that a druid is involved in the corruption. Look in the huts. Ask my fellow druids. Someone or something here will lead us to the source of the corruption. It has to. And what, a, and what about the Evergrowth? We'll wait and see if it communicates with us again. If not, I have an idea. But let us try to find the druid responsible for this situation first. I want to determine if this was an accident or a deliberate and reckless act. I see that Druid Audrine has brought us a visitor. What can I do for you today, Traveler? Do you know anything about the corruption spreading through the As grove? As a matter of fact, I noticed animals in the grove suffering from an affliction. I mentioned it to Archdruid Agathy, and she said she would look into it. Thanks for the information. Hmm. When I spoke to the Archdruid, it seemed like that was the first she heard of the corruption in the grove. Watch the arch, Drew. It'd be at fault. Hmm. 
My brother joined that bad man cult. Good gathering, stranger. I do not recognize you, but I know Druid Audreen very well. What may I do for you this day? Do you know anything about the corruption spreading through the grove? Nothing specific, I'm afraid. Just that the corrupted animals have made foraging in the grove dangerous. Oh, this might interest you. I felt a disturbance emanate from the wards in the undergrove recently. Like a surge of power went through them. What's the undergrove, and what was that about wards? The island's volcanic vents create all sorts of underground spaces. The large cavern beneath us is the undergrove. No one's allowed down there, not without the Archdruid's permission. The wards have something to do with the spirit of the grove. The spirit of the grove? You mean the Evergrowth? Yes, the Evergrowth. I'm surprised you know that ancient designation. I believe the wards reinforce the spirit's connection to the grove, but I'm not an expert on that. I can sense them, though. I have an affinity for such things. Thanks for the info. The Undergrove? No one but the Archdruid ever goes down there. Yeah! Call upon Ifre to strengthen the bond between the Evergrowth and our sacred grove. We call upon the god of song and forest to remove the bindings that tie our spirit to this hallowed land. We offer the sacrifice, O Ifre, so that all may walk the true way. A ritual? That's proof that a druid caused this problem. Look, there's a mistake in the second line. They wrote remove. I think we have everything we need to convince the Archdruid. Let's review what we discovered. What do you make of the corrupted fetish we Definitely found? Definitely a druidic ritual fetish. I use such accoutrement when conducting my own rituals. But this one bears the taint that afflicts the grove. This fetish must have been used in the ritual that released the corruption. And what about the restoration ritual we found? Whoever scrawled this did so in haste. They made an obvious mistake in the middle verse. It should say restore, but the author wrote down remove. That alone would have disastrous effects when the ritual was performed. And the two druids we spoke to, what do you think about the information they provided? Someone or something disturbed the wards in the undergrove, probably when the ritual was performed. And it appears the Archdruid knew about the corruption before I mentioned it, but she acted like she knew nothing. What's the purpose of the wards? I don't know all the details, but from what I've been taught, the Evergrowth resides in the Undergrove. The wards connect it to the Grove, but also bind it. We need to talk to the Archdruid. She's usually in the Northern Grove this time of day. I'll meet you in the Northern part of the Grove. Archdruid? What? Oh no, she's spreading the corruption. The All Wither. It's inside me, forcing me to do as it bids. Where did she go? Speak with me, mortal. The spirit of the grove has need of you. We are the ever The one you sought. She carries the taint of our corruption. We remember her from the undergrowth. She performs a ritual that released this blight upon the land. 
And that was kind of predictable that it was going to be the Archdruid. Just saying. This is all the Archdruid's fault. The Archdruid sought to renew our bindings, but the ancient spells have already freed. The part of us that is the All Withered tricked her. She spoke the wrong word. Now, the All Wither is free to spread its corruption, and the entire grove is in danger. The Arch Druid also mentioned the All Wither. What is that? The All Wither is a part of us, a spirit of nature, called forth and made manifest by the ancient Druids. At this sacred grove, the laws of nature are malleable. To strengthen those laws, the druids bound us here. But nature consists of circles. At one end, life. At the other, death. We are both life-nurturing growth and all withering decay. That part of us is now free. And once the corruption fully takes hold, the evergrowth will be gone. Only the All Wither will remain. Will you help us? What do you need me to do? Tell the Druids what we have said. They summoned and bound us in the past. They must be able to do so again. But urge them to hurry. The corruption consumes us. Soon, we shall not be able to stave off the All Wither. No matter how many times that happens, I... I am not sure I will ever get used to that. Return to the village, and tell the elders of the other person. We have troubling news concerning the Archdruid. Slow down, Audrine. Tell us what happened. The Evergrowth confirmed she performed the binding ritual, but she made a mistake. She released the All Wither. The Archdruid is responsible for the corruption? And she released the All Wither? Oh, the Grove is doomed! The Evergrowth is here and willing to help. In exchange for certain considerations. The Archdruid has returned to the Undergrove. Even now, the All Wither compels her to speed up the spread of corruption so it can consume us. In our weakened state, we cannot stop the All Wither from becoming the prominent spirit of the Grove. You said you could help us stop this. We can, but only if you and this druid break the remaining boards that bind us to this place. That will allow us to recover enough of our power, to restore the balance, and return the All Wither to its proper location in the circle. But you asked us to get the druids to restore your bindings. Now you want us to break them? The All Wither moves quickly. Already we can feel ourselves weakening, losing cohesion. The remaining shreds of our bindings have been corrupted and add to our pain. If you set us free, we can pull energy from the uncorrupted grove and aid you. Without the wards to bind you here, won't you just abandon the grove? We are the spirit of the grove. We maintain the balance and keep the true way. We know our duty and our responsibility. Trust us. Together, we can end the corruption and return the grove to its natural state. But decide quickly. We do not have all. Elders, allow us to enter the undergrove and do as the Evergrowth asks. We can't let the All Wither become the dominant spirit. For all we know, this is exactly what the All Wither wants us to do. But, yes, go. 
We'll do what we can up here to slow the spread of the corruption. The spirit wants us to enter the Undergrove and release its bindings. It claims that will allow it to overcome the Allwither. I sensed no duplicity while we were connected. I believe the Evergrowth spoke true of its intentions. Why do we... How do we get into the Undergrove? The entrance I am aware of is in the northern part of the Grove. I will meet you there. I have never been in the Undergrove, my friend. I have no idea what we might encounter down there. So be on your guard and ready for anything. What do we do once we enter the Undergrove? We find the corrupted wards. I cleanse them and you break them, much as we did in the Grove. After we deal with the initial wards, the Undergrove's central chamber should open, allowing us to destroy the last binding ward and set the spirit free. On an adventure. Yeah. All right, here we go. Magical wards bind the spirit to the grove. We need to find those wards, cleanse them, and destroy them. I'll cleanse the wards, then you destroy them. Central chamber should now be accessible. Let us go and set the spirit free. Nicely done. The final ward is somewhere in Find it and destroy it.
That was easy. I was expecting a boss fight. chest. where it belongs, as a natural part of our circle. Balance has been restored. Thank you, Spirit of the Grove. You and this druid have our thanks, mortal. You trusted us, and now the balance of nature has been restored. What happened to the All Wither? The All Wither is a part of us, just as death is a part of life. Two parts of the same circle. They are back where they belong, in the natural order. And we are where we are needed, maintaining the balance of this sacred grove. So the corruption is gone. There may still be corrupted wildlife lingering about, but the druids can deal with that. Otherwise, know that the danger has passed. And know that we are grateful, mortal. For everything. May your harvest never falter. The Evergrowth says the Grove is safe now. It will continue to perform its sacred duty. For now. I just hope we don't regret removing the Binding Wards. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Adventurer. It's disappointing that the Archdruid tried to renew the wards on her own, and allowed the All Wither to take control of her. At least we were able to restore the Evergrowth and stop the spread of corruption. What happens now? Now? <laughs> now life returns to normal here in the Grove. Though without the Binding Wards, we may need to be more compassionate to the Evergrowth. We want it to stay happy. Oh, and before I forget, this is for you. From the Stone Lore Circle, with thanks. In light of all that has happened, Audreen, we would like to make you a Circle Elder and Mediator with the Evergrowth. Druid Audreen, an Elder? And Mediator to the... Oh, very well. An Elder? A and the Mediator? I... <sighs> I don't know what to say. I hope you'll say yes. You proved yourself and demonstrated a singular rapport with the spirit of the Grove. Will you take on these responsibilities? I... Yes, of course. Thank you. All right, well, Bikos, that was interesting. But, uh, yeah, until the, this is where we will end things, so until the next one, this has been Eric the Plague Doctor, 981YT. And, uh, yeah. 
Uh, we will see what's next for us. Um, in the next ESO video, I might actually start the, uh... Might actually start the whole doing dungeons thing on the channel, uh, tonight at some point. I might, or I might not. I'll see where I get there. But, um... Yeah, so until the next one, this has been Eric, the Plague Doctor, 981YT, and I will see all of you guys back in Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, my favorite game of all time. But, uh, yeah, until then, bye!